I am constantly on the lookout for new and interesting ways to make my footage more stable when I'm out and about. I've used stabilizers like the DJI Osmo and the Kumba Cam and other smartphone stabilizers and whatnot, but I've never used one for a camera like I'm filming with. By the way, Panasonic G7. And I saw a deal pop up, I'm gonna say a few days ago, but it was actually like a couple of weeks ago, and this has been sitting in a box for a while, for an Axler gimbal. Specifically the Axler handheld gimbal for mirrorless cameras. Wisp 20M is what this says. Retail price on this is about $4.99, if not more than that. I paid $3.50 for it. Let's open it up and just see how it works and give it a shot. Now this box definitely looks a bit damaged, but I have opened it up previously and the gimbal itself comes inside of a case, so it should be good to go. It also comes with this handy dandy little user manual. It shows you everything that should be included here. It talks about getting started, of course, charging the batteries, attaching rubber grips, how to balance the camera and adjusting the rolling angle, adjusting the pitch angle and making sure your camera fits properly, even how to attach it to a tripod using a 3 8 inch thread. So not a standard tripod mount, but usually what comes underneath of it on a tripod under your ball head mount if you've got one. Inside the little carrying case, very nice little carrying case, I've seen more and more of these lately. Got a little LED light. These things are super bright, but they don't put out a huge beam of light or anything, as you would expect. Some silica gel. Three 18650 2600 milliamp hour 3.7 volt batteries. A micro USB cable for charging. What appears to be a spare plate. And the gimbal itself, which is a significant gimbal. I mean, this thing's got some heft to it. And just taking a quick look around the handle itself, I can see a button here. I can only assume this is the power button. You've got a little joystick here with arrows on it, so up, down, left, and right. It also clicks in when you push on it. Micro USB port here, full-size USB port there, 3 8 inch thread on the bottom, and then you just unscrew the bottom, and that's where your batteries are going to go. There's also, as I didn't really mention there, there was not an included charger, because this included piece here does have a micro USB port on it as well. So you can always take this out of it and charge it separately if you don't want to have this attached to a cable. And I think without any further ado, because there's not a whole lot of ado to be furthered, I'm gonna take these batteries, get everything installed and set up, take this camera, stick it on here, and see how it works. So when you see me again, I'll either be coming at you from that camera or from another camera looking at the camera on the, we'll get this done. And we are back. This is charged. I've done some sort of testing and initial setup with it. It's actually a couple of weeks later. I even read through some of the manual, most of the manual. And as you can see, it's up and it's working. I have mounted on here the Sony A6300, the Alpha 6300, with a little microphone on top of it. There is one thing I will say about the mounting process. This little quick release plate does come off, which is nice, but you do have to have some sort of a little screwdriver in order to tighten everything up. There's not any sort of knob or anything like you'd normally get on a tripod mount. So that kind of stinks. The other sort of issue that I'm having with it, and this may only be with the A6300, it depends on your camera. You may notice there, the screen is on at the moment, but you can see there, it's turning off. So whenever this little motor in the back gets just right behind the camera, it turns the screen off and you can't see anything. So a bit of a problem there. But in terms of how it works, we'll give you a quick sample here in a minute. You've got a little joystick on the back. You push the button right underneath it. The button turns green if you've got enough power. And then the joystick itself can be used to sort of move it around, left, right, up and down. Actually, it's inverted on mine at the moment. I'm sure there's probably a way to change that, but it, it gets the job done. There are two modes included. You've got a follow mode wherein basically you turn the whole thing and the camera follows wherever you're going, up, down, left, right, things like that. And then you press the button once, just tap it, the joystick button, and it goes into locked on mode where basically it stays on whatever you point it at almost no matter what you do which is kind of a good thing. And of course, very nice to have both of those as options. You can also recalibrate this. And basically what you do there is you set it down on a flat level surface. You hold the joystick button in while it's powered on for, it says two seconds, but it's more like four or five. That turns the motors off. You do it again, it turns them back on and calibrates. You can also just turn it off and back on and it usually sort of calibrates itself. As far as the setup process, it did take a little bit of work. You kind of have to get it where it's close to being balanced. And then at that point, if you turn it on on a level surface, it kind of writes itself and calibrates and everything. And just make sure not to actually do much touching of the camera because the motors kind of freak out a little bit like that. So what do you say? Let's do a little bit of quick footage with this and then we'll wrap it up. And here you go. We are filming on the Sony A6300 using its kit lens, the 16 to 50 lens. The lens itself does have stabilization built in, but the body doesn't have any. So if this footage looks stable to you, it's because of the gimbal most likely. And as I walk around the house, you can see I'm walking 
and it's it's kind of keeping up with me as I, I have to kind of turn it and force it to stay on me but once you get a little more experience with it once i get a little more experience with it that won't be such a big deal for me so far though i i love how stable and how smooth the footage looks if i turn it around i can't see what i'm actually filming sort of but you can see how nice and smooth and stable everything looks see if i can look through the viewfinder while i'm doing this but just walking at a decently fast pace around the house it's keeping up with me quite nicely I can do turns and everything, so for your little following action shots, even getting down kind of low to the floor and everything, not a problem. And then again, super, super smooth footage, looking around outside, walking around outside. Love how smooth this thing makes it. It is a little bit heavy in the hand, but still definitely not bad and very easy to control. And I like having the sort of fine grain control of being able to use the stick to go up and down and left and right to make little micro corrections there when needed. And we're back on the main camera. So to go ahead and wrap this up, initial thoughts and impressions on it. One, ultra super stable footage. Absolutely love that. I don't have enough long-term experience with this device to know how it's going to perform in the long run, how the battery life's going to be, but for a quick one-off shot, you know, if you've got something you need to be ultra smooth in your video, your movie, whatever it is you're working on, this is not bad. I've seen great results out of other ones that are in the same price range, if not maybe a little bit cheaper. As I probably mentioned earlier in the video, I got this on a deal from B&H for like $350, so it's very, very hard, if not impossible, to find one for that price. Now the little bit of time that I have been using this, half hour to an hour probably, the stick there are three stickers on the different sections of the motors. The stickers are already coming off. I don't think it's going to impact anything. I looked under one of them and I didn't see anything exposed, no wiring or anything. But it does leave me a little bit disconcerted that the branding and the sort of form and finish is coming off that quickly. It's not going to make me stop using it. When I need footage that is ultra smooth, ultra stable walking, running footage, this is definitely going to be my go-to for this style of camera or the one that I'm filming with, the Panasonic G7. So is this worth the price? The retail price being what it is in the five to $600 range, I'm going to say that's definitely up to you and your project. If you can get it for the 350 range, it's definitely a whole lot more worthwhile. I can I can actually see myself taking this to school events, to weddings, to recitals, things like that. Being that dad that comes with a gigantic rig and whatnot, this is a whole lot smaller than some big steady cam type rig. And for me, I considered it to be affordable. So I do very much look forward to getting more use out of this as time moves forward. It's a very cool, very easy to set up package. Not as fast to set up as I would probably hope and expect because of that need to have a little screwdriver, but the actual balancing and everything didn't take that long at all, so can't complain. So I'll put a link to where you can find it on B&H and probably on Amazon down in the description if you're interested in checking it out for yourself. Let me know what you think of it down below, and thank you guys as always for watching. Make sure to hit that thumbs up if you liked the video, and subscribe to receive more when they become available, and I'll see you again next time.